Thanks, David Beckham. Yeah. Because of this guy, there's a lot of people who said, oh, we'll wear Hawaiian shirts, too, because the guy wore one in Miami. It's Robin Liz, his morning crew on his radio. Yeah. Now it's like people are wanting to wear these things again. Well, of course. I think they kind of they come into fashion, they go out of fashion, they come into fashion. So, yeah, David Beckham wore his, and as an influencer, that's kind of what happens. Everybody wants well, to wear Is that what one. he's called now, an influencer? I would think so. He has a Dude huge... played soccer. Right. Well, but he he's married to a woman who is a fashion designer. She used to be like pop star, part of the Spice Girls, if you remember. I wonder what she thought about the Hawaiian shirt. Probably. My wife doesn't like them. Why? Wait, you have on a wonderful Hawaiian shirt today. Well, she bought this when we went to Key West for my son's wedding. Okay, okay. So this right. is a Key West shirt. Yeah, and so she doesn't want you to wear it here? <laughs> Actually, she it... said that's not appropriate for work. Did she really? <laughs> yes. Why? So I have it on. No, it's great. And uh, my husband uh, has a couple of Hawaiian shirts. I love them. Like every day, maybe not so much, but every now and then. And of so course, da- I forgot her name. What's David Beckham's wife? Victoria. Beckham. Victoria. Yeah. I wonder what she thinks about her husband wearing Hawaiian shirt. It's David Beckham. I think she's okay with it. All right. I think she is. But but you know, it's one of those things that Amy wants you to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. I would think. Oh, I'll keep it. Yeah, because you like it. Kinda. Or is it because you just want to... It's not appropriate for work. I'm yeah. wearing it. <laughs> and you want to see her reaction when you wear it. Is yeah, that what it exactly. is? So it's like, why'd you reason. wear that? <laughs> All the shirts that you have. Uh, she even started ironing so I'd wear them again. Cause really? I don't. Yeah, because I don't like to take the time at so early in the morning well, yeah. that I get up. Yeah, 3 o'clock in the morning or whatever. But does she put this Hawaiian shirt in oh, the Oh, this back? one's all wrinkled. Can you tell? Well, I mean, you've been wearing it, it for a little while, but I don't... So it think... unwrinkles when you wear it. That's nice. Yeah, that is so nice. Well, I've got a pair of pajama pants. Yeah. They have a hole, like, in the like in the thigh right above the knee, and I wear them all the time. Joey doesn't really care for them so, so much. So you don't want to get rid of those? No, but they're soft. They're just to the point where they're comfortable. <laughs> That's something you won't let go of. I really want... A lot of people. <laughs> I don't know if everybody does, but there are a lot of people that hold on to things. Yeah. Because they don't want to get get rid of it. Like yeah. TJ, for instance. TJ is one of our producers. Mm-hmm. And you have this hat that, what what do you call this hat? What yeah. would you call it? So it was part of my uniform when I was in the Navy. And it's just uh, like it's a hat from the Dwight D. Eisenhower, the Ike. And uh, like I love it. It's It just brings back memories of when I was in the Navy. So He wears it all the time. Yeah. But that's his reason why. It's not necessarily he likes the hat so much. It's just what it represents, which I think is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if, if you know anybody that hangs on to something yeah. for a reason. What is it? 800-447-7234. We'd love to hear your story. His Morning Crew. Here's what some people on our Instagram are saying about not giving up when it comes to clothes. Jeans, carnigans, hoodies, dresses, and T-shirts so far on our Instagram with his radio. It's Robin Liz, his morning crew on his radio. For Liz, it's a pair of pajama bottoms that she's had since 1852. Do what now? (laughs) They're they're kind of old. They're real soft. They got a big hole in them. But I don't even care because I just love them and they make me feel so good. Have you had them since you were a kid? I mean, when did you get these things? Um, I'm gonna say I've probably had them ten years. Somewhere between seven and they're ten comfy. years. They're comfy. They're just, they're worn. Uh, you know what I mean? Like threadbare, mm-hmm. as they would say. But it, they're just so soft and yummy. My wife got it, has a uh, uh, a hoodie. It was a hoodie. It's a sweatshirt. It's okay. a sweatshirt. I'm yeah. trying to remember it was a hoodie or a sweatshirt. But it's a sweatshirt I got 20 years ago from Duke. Yes. And she hangs on to that. Well, because it's yours, there's that, you know, that tie, that sentimental thing. And then mm-hmm. it's probably a little loose on her. And she just loves it. Benturn said something of his dad's got thrown away. <laughs> yeah, my dad had like a collection of Hawaiian shirts, like growing up as a kid. And then when we moved uh, away from Athens as a kid, my mom just kind of ditched them and threw them away. On purpose? Yeah, on purpose. It had to be. She, it she had thought to they were be. ugly. It had to she, be. She did she not said like they them. were ugly, yeah. Right. And all the time. But he didn't know that she threw them away. Oh, absolutely Until not. afterwards. Yeah. Was it okay? Was he okay with it? I, I don't think he was for a while, but he got over it eventually. <laughs> well, if he never wore them, why well, even hold on to them? He wore them all the time. Yeah. I mean, he wore well, them. How did he not know that they were thrown away? I have no clue. In the move, you just missed yeah, things the move, sometimes. You just, I guess yeah. you lost it. Oh, so he figured it out when he went to go, oh, I want to put one of these on. Yeah. Where are they? It's Tuesday. Which, I need my purple which shirt. Which box are they in? Yeah. 
I don't know. I guess they got lost or something. Who knows? So They're many, still on the U-Haul truck somewhere. How, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's up at the Goodwill. Where is uh, where is he now with Hawaiian shirts? Uh, every now and then we joke about it, but he can't keep one unless my mom throws it away or gives it to Goodwill so or something. He she brings can, it. He, oh no my way. goodness. He brings a new one in and she's like, nope, not Whoopsie. happening. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Oh, it's a big day for little Marley. She is about to say her very first word. Had no idea that what was going to happen, but she was about to say her very first word. It's Rob and Liz, his morning crew on his radio. Holding up in the bathroom mirror is Chris, Marley's uncle. I know, and I love the relationship between these two. And here's what she said for her very first word. Is it mom? Is it dad? Is it uncle? Her first word was... Yay! Say it again. Say your word. Yay! 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 <laughs> Yeet. Kids say that. Like, I was like, what does that even mean? I forget what it means, but, uh, like, yeet. And that's what this baby said. Her very first <laughs> word. That's uncle's favorite word. He Evidently. says, yeet. TJ, video producer, says it all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just like that. Tell Liz the meaning, yeah, would what you? What does it mean? It basically means like yes, or if you yeet something, you throw it. A what? You throw it. Okay. Yeet. And when you no, say I'm not saying it right. It's the old fashioned yes. Right. But that I guess, kind of, that's what yeet is. Okay, so I have to say it. yeet. Yeah, but this is this that baby's first words. I don't know what your baby's first word was. If it was mama, it was daddy, if it was uncle, but Marley is yeet. My niece's first word was pizza pizza. <laughs> You're kidding <laughs> because me. Because she would hear it on the little Caesars commercials and so she said pizza pizza. <laughs> I know. Most of my kids, I think everybody said, like, mama or daddy. That's that a lot like, of TV watching. Well, I And a I, big advertising campaign for Little Caesars during that well, time, yeah. too. yeah. But I think, you know, just having the TV on while she's playing or whatever. And pizza, then pizza. Pizza, pizza. Pizza. <laughs> and classic. Here's Marley again. Yay! Yay! Mornings with Rob and Liz. Little baby Marley's first words was... Yay! That's her, actually. Yay! <laughs> Yeet. I, Mark uh, texted in and said, I thought yeet was like a native southern word asking somebody, have they eaten yet? Yeet. 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 Do I have to say it like that? for Yes. To- yes. Yes. Yeet. 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 Oh, this, is, this is going to go on all day. Yeet. 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 <laughs> Robin Liz, it. it's his radio. <laughs> Baby's first words for you. 800-447-7234. Uh, here's Eileen. What was it, Eileen? Buddy. But he would say, buddy. Was there somebody that that was directed at, like a brother or an uncle or something? It was, it was me. It was my friend's child, and... His mama was so mad because I always called him Buddy. Eileen, I have to ask. Do you have to catch a train? <laughs> no. Where, where are you? I'm at work and I'm right by the train. I'm sorry. <laughs> it sounds like you're at the train station getting ready to leave. Uh, I'm close enough to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> All aboard! His morning crew. Kimberly's here. His radio, 800-447-7234. What's up, Kimberly? I had a niece who her mom had taken her to see, I believe it was one of the Madagascar movies. She was sitting down, and she heard her little her daughter saying something, and she was just listening, listening, listening. And then apparently in the movie, they said the words, woo-hoo. Well, she apparently had heard her Aunt Kimmy say woo-hoo because she finally figured out that what she was saying was woo-hoo, Aunt Kimmy. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> Which only goes to prove that they hear what you're saying. You better watch out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeet. <laughs> Yeet. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Probably just like you, Annie and Cliff who are a couple, they thought, ah, we're bored, let's just build our dream home. Mm -hmm. And they did. They built their dream home. It was only one-twelfth of the size (laughs) of what this dream home is because it's more of a miniature dream home. It is. It looks like a dollhouse, but unlike any dollhouse I've ever seen in my life. 
it looks like so much fun. So much detail yes. in every room. Right. That like they have little newspapers. They have books on every shelf. I mean, there's wallpaper, there's little tables, there's a pocketbook hung on the side of a chair. I mean, I don't know how long they actually spent making this dream home. Oh, hours and hours. You should see the garage. I, it's, I mean, the garage has got the tools in it and everything. It looks a little messy. Yeah. It's just incredible. The kitchen, I mean, it has like little fake fruit in it. I mean, it's incredible, the detail. Like, they need to stage homes. You know what I mean? They need Miniature to. Miniature homes like this? No, they need to stage real homes. If they can do this to a dollhouse and make it look this inviting and warm and homey, then they need to stage homes that are up for sale. Well, I'm trying to figure out is where do they get all the miniature stuff? I um, mean, from, from Wall Street newspaper hanging on the wall in a in a thing? I think there are templates where you can print some of that stuff out, but I, I also... Know. I mean, they've got crayons and yeah. paste. I mean, they got a children's room with all the games, and it looks sloppy like a children's like, room. Right, like cluttered and that Yeah, like they were just playing. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think also somebody is an artist because they had to have had that artist's eye to, to create this and... It's just wild. I don't oh, know. and they're also um, because so many people have been following them on social media. I think they have like forty thousand followers on social that they have taken to uh, raising money for the Alzheimer's Association. Isn't that great? So they turn this around so yeah. they can help some people, right? Help themselves get through the pandemic and help some others. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Tiffany must have a great relationship. This is like a gift from God mm-hmm. to have a great relationship with her mother-in-law because. That's her reconnection to remember, to see her mother-in-law. Wow. It's Robin Liz, his morning crew on his radio. Yeah, and if you want to make a reconnection to remember somebody you haven't seen in a while, here's what you do. You text in the word reconnection to 800-447-7234, just like Tiffany did. Um, and here's the thing. I think she wants not only to see her mom-in-law, but she wants to cultivate that relationship between her kids and her husband's family. They're all from Michigan. And so she wants to take them, you know, from here to Michigan, see the family, uh, have her husband, you know, see his mom again, and just have a great time hanging Didn't out. Didn't they have a trip and it was canceled because of the quarantine? It was. They haven't yeah. actually gotten to, to Michigan in like 10 years. So they planned this big trip in the fall of 2020, and we all know what happened there. Yeah. So that's the reconnection the they want. The planet got quarantined. <sighs> we couldn't go in anywhere. In March 2020. Yeah. So. That's the reconnection to remember. But what about yours? What would your reconnection to remember even look like? Text the word reconnection, 800-447-7234. You can go to hisradio.com or tap on the My His Radio. Mornings with Rob and Liz. Why would Gene Simmons take up for Tim Tebow? Hmm. His morning crew with Rob and Liz, his radio. The first thing you think with Gene Simmons is why would he defend anybody who is of faith? Oh, sure. You know, you would think the guy is one of the front men of KISS. Yeah. The guy is all over TV for mm-hmm. the most part. If you ever watch his reality series, you're like, uh, he's not kind of like going to church every Sunday. I wouldn't think. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you wouldn't see that. Yeah. But yet Gene Simmons is like, leave Tim Tebow alone. He's Good like, dude. Him. You know, here he is going back to Jacksonville and getting back into football. Tim Tebow. Yes, yes not, yes, Gene, not Simmons. Gene Simmons. I don't know if the guy can throw a ball. Maybe he can <laughs> if he can take a tackle. But Tim Tebow can. And Tim Tebow is really into, hey, this is who I am. I'm for Jesus. I mean, back in the day when he was playing college ball, you'll remember that underneath his eyes mm-hmm. in the black was John 316. Right. You know? And people it's, would ask, what does that mean? Yeah, he'll tell right. you. You yeah. know, it was a it was a good, you know, conversation starter. Exactly. And he would talk about his life in Jesus, and he speaks about Jesus all the time. And he's, you know, he's a motivational speaker. Mm-hmm. He speaks in churches. And here he is going back to the NFL. And so here's what Gene Simmons from KISS Tweeted. I'm going to read it word for word. I support Tim Tebow. Yeah. Yeah. Then he goes on and says he has widely criticized and made fun of simply because he's a man of faith who believed in his Christian values. Shame on, and he mentions something there. I'm not going to go there. Yeah. And the rest of the world for stooping so low. Good on Gene Simmons. Honestly, for taking up for, you know, we can love people and we should love that. Jesus instructs us to love people who are different than we are. You don't put somebody down. You don't judge somebody, right? And that's that's what Gene Simmons says. He may not agree with Tim Tebow, unfortunately, but he says 
th- this man stands for his beliefs and his values, stop putting him down Just for it. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Let him live his life. Yeah, exactly. And Tim Tebow's living his life for Jesus. That's clear. Mm-hmm. You see that. And I like that that Tim Tebow has stood strong in his faith, that Gene Simmons has took notice, and he's like, right. hey, I respect the guy for it. You should, too. Yeah. I, Tim Tebow has put up with a lot of stuff from the world. You know, being called out for his faith. And he, I'm sure he's had some dark moments at home where he's, you know, his heart has hurt. But he has stood strong in his faith and uh, hasn't backed down from what the world says. And then I think about you. And I don't know where you are when it comes to people around your life and how they treat you because you live for Jesus. But take the example of what Tim Tebow is. He just Mm -hmm. stands strong. And so you can, too. So if there are people in your family that surround you at work that are like, you know, maybe making fun of you, there's somebody else who's noticing and going, I respect that person. Mm -hmm. They respect you because of the way that you're living. So don't give up. Stand strong because you're going to gain some respect out of that. His Morning Crew. This guy did this to five elderly ladies at a restaurant. Can you believe that some guy did this for them. It's Robin Liz, his morning crew on his radio. The guy goes into a restaurant just having some breakfast, you know, doing his thing, baking and eggs, that kind of thing. And uh, he hears some chatter and he can tell it's older women. And so, you know, I'm sure he just sits there and people watches just a little bit. Well, it was five ladies, elderly, having breakfast together, just, you know, cackling, having a good time. And he watched them for a little while. And then he felt this little nudge. Have you ever done that? You you feel a nudge to do something. And maybe you say, oh, I'm going to sit here. I'm not, I'm not going to follow through with it. Well, the nudge got bigger and bigger. And finally, he goes over to him and he says, you know what? I want to pay for your breakfast. And he said, you remind me of my mom. I, I lost my mom not that long ago. Oh, that's and, sad. Yeah. And said, you know, my mom would have been right in the middle of you, just cutting up and having a good time. And you remind me of my mom. One of the ladies of the five ladies gets up and says, I so needed you to come over to my table. She said, I lost my son not that long ago. No way. And she hugged him. They just had a, a quick moment. <laughs> he picked up their tab and walked off. They don't know his name. He just left the restaurant. But they both needed each other in that moment. That's sweet. And God was right there in the middle of it all. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. This could be your dream job. It's his morning crew with Rob and Liz, his radio. Liz is like into the royal family and everything that you need to know about the United Kingdom. So the question I would have for Liz this morning is what in the world does a castle officer do? I guess just takes care of the castle itself. The overseer, if you will. You said guess. Well, because you I don't, don't know. I don't know. I, I, I thought she would know. I know what the queen does. I'm not sure what the officer of the castle does. Well, there's this castle that's in England. It, I don't know if you've even heard of it. It's on St. Michael Mount in Cornwall. It's a little island of its own, except for a causeway that connects the mainland to the island when the tide is really low. Mm-hmm. And then when the tide's high, it covers it up. you got to get there by a yeah. ferry. But they're looking for somebody who will be the castle officer. I don't know what that means, but you'll be the castle officer. I can tell you, this thing is really old, this castle. Yes, it is. It, it's beautiful. Yeah, it was around in 1135. Wow. Yeah, so. They don't make them like that anymore. Let I don't know you. if a castle officer is like the handyman, but can you imagine trying to fix up that joint? Yeah, I, right. And and I don't know if it's somebody who secures the castle, because yeah. that you know could fall under maybe officer. They, but Maybe they want you to flip it. You know, my, Flip it? <laughs> yeah. You know, recessed lighting, right. the backsplash, <laughs> the wood floors. A chef's kitchen. You know. Sure. His morning crew. They're only four hours away. But yet, because of the pandemic, for Kristen, her grandparents might as well live in Australia because of the, the, the she just can't get with them. Mm-hmm. So her reconnection to remember well, to be get with her grandparents again, it's Robin Liz, his morning crew on his radio. And she said, um, I'm a first time homeowner. Like, I have a job, I have responsibilities. And so, if I take any time off, of course, I lose money and that impacts my budget. Uh, so, I haven't been able to do that. So, a reconnection would be to go that four hours and even just hang out a weekend, playing games, hanging out on the porch with my grandparents, having them tell me those stories that I didn't maybe take. Um, 
you know, so seriously when I was a kid. I didn't oh, put any man. thought into it. So Kristen, that's what she wants. I hope that happens yeah. for you. That's a beautiful reconnection to remember. For you, what would that reconnection to remember even look like? Tell us, because we might be able to make it happen. So text the word reconnection to 800-447-7234. That's 800-447-7234. You can go online to hisradio.com or tap on the My His Radio app. Rob and Liz, His Morning Crew. Boy, talk about a throwback and being able to live or rent this joint. It's Rob and Liz, His Morning Crew on His Radio. Oh, my bing ling That's from Friends. In case you didn't really? know, Janice from Friends. <laughs> that tells you how much I ever watched that. I I, I really did like Friends. It, it debuted in uh, 1994, and the Friends apartment, not the actual apartment, but somebody has almost like an Airbnb that they have remodeled so that it looks exactly like Monica and Chandler's apartment. Really? Yes. And you can now Friday is when you can go on to I think it's Booking.com or something like that, but you go online and you can reserve it for only $19.94. So it's not that bad. It is in New York. So you got to pay to get to New York. 19 uh, bucks a night? Yes, but only for two nights. Only can you stay this weekend. It's first time for a serve. So, I mean, as soon as it goes live, you got to get on and uh, get it. But there's also, there's also going to be some other things that they're adding into this, more than just the stay. But they're also going to give you a tour of some of the pieces that were from the Friends show. Um, I don't know what those include. For 19 bucks a night? Yeah. Overnight stay. What's the catch? It's just in honor of the year that it premiered. And I think it's almost like, you know, a soft opening for a restaurant or a new store. They kind of give some really cool oh, deals. And then it gets really expensive after that. And then it gets really expensive. 800 after bucks that. a night, I bet. <sighs> if even that low. Because it is almost like. That low? You think it's higher? I would think. Tw- okay, uh, uh, $50,000 a night. Okay, that may be too high. Somewhere in the middle is where I was thinking, but it's like a two-room suite, so 50000 is a little high. Okay, well, I'm trying. <laughs> Rob and Liz, his morning crew. There we go, celebrating the 30th, and I don't even know what the 30th is. If it's a silver bronze, is that a thing? Silver yeah. bronze? Well, there's silver and then there's bronze. Yeah. Okay. Copper. Uh, here be... I am combining them all. <laughs> yeah. It's Robin Liz, his morning crew on his radio. Yeah. Well, we got some texts that tell you what it is. Devin, Veronica, Sherry, and Jean all said it's Pearl. It's the Pearl anniversary. For the 30th. Yes. Oh, wow. For your 30th. And then Joellen said, you better head to the jewelry store because <laughs> you got to go pick up some uh, pearls. Sure, Joellen. Well, what I think you could do to save a little money is uh-huh. you could get an oyster. Yeah, you can buy an oyster that has a pearl Where? inside of it. Well, Where? you can go on. I know it's going to maybe a little hard to track Today's one down. Today's the day. Well, I can't. But you could go to Amazon and then show her, look what I ordered you on Amazon. <laughs> but you could try to find some place around here that, that might sell. Because I think oyster? that's romantic. Well, she doesn't like seafood. It's not to eat. It's to look for the pearl. There's supposed to be a pearl in it. It's not going to be a perfect pearl. It's going to be a low quality pearl. But at the same time, it's. Romantic. But not every oyster has a pearl. I think these are guaranteed to have a pearl. Where? Where? I don't know. Is there pearl? Is there? Is there oysters anywhere around that I can buy today and bring home? Um, we'll have Please. to find out. I will do some research for you and Amy, okay, to help <sighs> you celebrate today. Today, I need to know before ten. Okay, well, give me two seconds. I'm don't Google get, yet. I'm gonna have to. Cynthia's here at eight hundred four four seven seven two three four. What? What do you say, <laughs> Cynthia? You need to go get your wife some. Pearls for the 30th. Okay, can I borrow a couple of thousand dollars? <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> I don't even own a pearl myself. <laughs> How many years have you guys been married? 32. Wow, congratulations. Yeah. What did you do on your 30th? We went on a cruise. Where? To the Bahamas. Oh, nice. Bahamas, yes. And I get COVID on my 30th. Well, I mean, I don't have COVID. Yeah. Oh, I, I was mean, like, what? COVID-19 is around, so I mean, <laughs> right. there's a lot of stuff you can't do. Ooh, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Megan's parents live in Wyoming. It's been about two years since she's been able to see them. Her reconnection to remember? 
I think you know it. It's Robin Liz, his morning crew on his radio. Yeah, she says, I don't, you know, only want to see my parents after two years, but they need, they need, is what she said, to see the grandchildren. So I think they're they're lonely and, you know, missing the family. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, she wants to put all the kids in the car, the whole family in the car, take a road trip uh, from here to Wyoming. And that is the reconnection she wants his radio to make happen. I feel you, Megan, because our first grandchild in my family mm-hmm. will be in Florida. Uh, oh, that so it hurts my heart. Yeah, because Liz is, lives here. Yeah. You know? I can, you know, 10 minutes away, I can run over and see her. But you can make a reconnection to remember whatever that is. Maybe it's to see your parents or your best friend or, or whatever it is. You can make it happen. What would it actually look like? Yeah. Let us know what your reconnection to remember is. Text the word reconnection to 800 447 7234. The word reconnection to that number 800 447 7234. You can go to hisradio.com. It's right there. Or you can tell us by tapping on the My His Radio app.